Shabbat Shalom, Exacting Truth, Body Fellowship members, and of course, the Exacting Truth landscape of Body Fellowship believers across that fruity plain that fellowship with us, irrespective of where your membership lies. Welcome to another Exacting Truth Ministries Saturday Sabbath Facebook Live. I'm your host this morning, Solera R. Mann, Jr., pastor and leading emissary at Exacting Truth Ministries in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your mighty hand. We thank you for your excellence. We thank you for your great works that have been manifested towards us. We're asking right now, Heavenly Father, that you come into this live, that you come into this service, this fellowship. We're asking that you receive our posture of worship, that it be pleasing in your sight, most high. We're asking that you receive our prayer, our praise. We're asking that you send your word this morning and let it be an edification to all those that hear it we thank you for protection we thank you for provision we thank you for your covering for our families loved ones our children friends neighbors co-workers we even thank you for what you have afforded our enemies we're asking right now that you give us insight and that you order our steps we're asking that you remember those that need remembering everywhere we thank you for answering prayer we thank you for your healing grace, and we're asking that you allow it to continue and pervade uh, as we intercede for those that are in need of healing, mind, body, soul, and spirit. We're asking right now that you remember those that uh, continually seek prayer. Precious Auntie Maggie, we thank you for her sustenance. Continue to keep her uh, precious landscape sister Brittany New Day, strengthen her right now. Let her know that she's not alone. We're asking that you grant traveling protections to those that are traveling this week and weekend. Cover them with your blood. We're asking that you remember the truly poor today, the sick and shut in. We're asking that uh, you remember those that need remembering. We're in an age of decompression where people are abandoning conventional, fundamental faith for concoctions that are made up completely influenced by how Satan, our adversary. These efforts and actions are largely due to hypocrisy that transpires amidst man because of sacrilegion of your true purpose, because of dereliction and a departure from the orthodoxy of your scripture. And we're asking right now that you give us the strength not to blame you for what mankind has done. Help us to be accountable in this evil and tumultuous age. And we're going to be careful to give you the glory and honor. It shall be thine. Ask these blessings and many more in that great name, Yeshua, Yehoshua HaMashiach. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, beloved. Welcome. We're grateful to have you all that are gathered with us this morning. With us, we've got a powerful and encouraging word for you. It's not going to be long. It's brief because we've got a lot going on, but the Most High comes first. We tithe our lives, and so we're not going to bring any less than what the Most High has imparted into us, but he's given us something brief but powerful for you to carry with you and for you to share and light up this world with. And so we're excited prior to delving into our text this morning. We're going to uh, ask you to pay very close attention to the announcements. We've got some exciting things coming up October the 1st. We're going to be getting together live in person for our Saturday Sabbath, and we're going to return to the great tradition of uh, worship and praise, prayer and deliverance that has been a staple of our ministry for so long, blessed us with uh, so many different ways where we exalt his name. And so we're going to be coming together October the 1st in a live in person Saturday Sabbath, and that's going to be from 1030 a.m. till uh, 12, and then in November, forgive me, I don't recall the exact date it was in, in the announcements, that powerful family and friends worship and praise fest is going to take place, and we don't want you to miss it. Put it on the calendar. We have an excellent time, awesome time, as we've had this past week. Of course, we talk about it every week in our exacting insight into the word, the Bible study, and question and answer, and I'm telling you, the Most High meets us there. We had a rich time this past uh, Wednesday, and we're going to invite you to come out this week. Put it in your calendar. Don't forsake the assembling of yourself as the matter of some is, as is written in Hebrews chapter 10, and join us there 
7 p.m. on Wednesday evening. I promise you, it'll be a blessing and an edification to your life. Before we delve into the word this morning, we're going to just give a good, bless the Most High and praises to him for preserving my wonderful nephew, Brother Isaac Rosen, integral part of the landscape. He's encouragement to us and to the fellowship and to the landscape. And he had another succession around that great star. I believe it was last Sunday. And we don't want to be remiss in sharing that. And if we miss somebody's uh, name, call out in prayer, actually, or if you had a birthday or such, uh, we just want to say praise the Most High and just extend blessings to you as well. All right, you all know on Saturday Sabbath, it is tradition at Exact and Truth Ministries. We hold up the Holy Writ. Why? Because it contains words of the Most High and words that were left on record for our learning. So we began that tradition because we want to encourage people to look up. We ought to look into the hills from which cometh our help, our help coming from the Most High that has made the heavens and the earth. So we want you to look up and now down to your own understanding. There's nothing down there. Uh, we need to look on high. And we need to also recognize that we symbolize and represent a city that is set upon a hill that cannot be hidden. So... We're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So we want you to look up today, beloved. Amen. If you would, please join us as we prepare to read the Holy Writ. And we would love for you to join us in the Hebrew book of Saul, chapter 91. We're going to be reading the entire chapter, verses 1 through 16. And if you have the capability, please join us in the New International Version of Psalm 91, where we'll be reading. Herein is the reading of the Holy Writ, beloved, and it reads as thus, Psalm chapter 91, verses 1 through 16 in IV. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Lord have mercy, that's powerful. I'm going to read that again. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High, in the shelter that the Most High himself is, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty, will rest in his shadow. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, the Most High God, of the Hebrews, of course, in whom I trust. This is the declaration of this division of song this morning, the writer thereof. Three, surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. This is their confidence and their assurance. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, hallelujah, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Praise the Most High. Look at the confidence of this individual's faith. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, this is their belief. And this is what they believe is promised to them and the covenant that they have with the father. 10, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Whew, this is powerful, beloved, because he loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue him and I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. <laughs> The Most High, they quote, will say he will call on me and I will answer him, say if the Most High. I'm adding that, but just giving you context for what we're reading. I will be with him in trouble. I will 
deliver him and honor him. So the first part of the chapter talks about the expectation of the believer that finds the most high shelter. Now he's talking about the most high's perspective on us. 15 again, he will call on me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. <laughs> Hallelujah. What an encouraging and powerful reading out of the Psalm, Psalm 91. May the Most High add a blessing and enrich us through that reading. And beloved, for the time this morning that has been allotted to me to speak to you, the title of our text this morning is simply titled Unlocking the Essence of Psalm chapter 91. Amen. Beloved, in Hebrew tradition, Psalm 91 is viewed as a psalm of protection, as can be clear out of what we just read. In Hebrew tradition, it is a psalm of protection, which is commonly invoked in times of hardship. It's something that is relied upon, remembered, and recalled. Though no author is mentioned in the Hebrew text of this particular division of Saul, Jewish tradition ascribes it to Moses. Interesting, is it not? With King David subsequently compiling it in his book of Psalms. Psalm in Hebrew means praises, and its Greek transliteration prior to entering into English, in which we say psalm, is the noun psalmoi, meaning instrumental music, and by extension, the words accompanying the music. So we're dealing with songs, basically poetry at best. Why is this important? Someone may be asking this morning. It's important because the general way in which much of the Judeo-Christian Bible is commonly understood, shared, and even taught today. Many things written and preserved in scripture that in actuality was literally someone's personal thought and or personal opinions or outlook. Today is taught and has been presented to many congregations as if it is the sacrosanct words of the I am, when rather, once again, it may be the thoughts and inflections, depending on where you read, of a very human individual left on record for our learning. And as with any written or spoken scripture as well, depends critically on proper context in order for its full impact to manifest and its power to be effectively realized and understood. Now listen, beloved, I'm not implying that a scripture verse should be diminished or viewed as inferior because it may not be a direct quote attributed to the Most High Creator. Once again, all of this is left on record for our learning, we believe, in our faith. It, however, does lose effectiveness and usefulness to the reader when a particular scripture or verse is viewed and taken out of context. So context is important today. Many believers, far too many, I might add, <laughs> understand and take things in scripture literally that should be understood figuratively or in a broader sense and conversely pass off literal scriptures and pass off the literal meaning encapsulated in verses oftentimes as figurative or that you can take creative license with them or open to broad interpretation when in fact it is quite literal, should be taken as such, uh, and is not figurative in any sense. So this is a common practice in this day and time, a misunderstanding and a loss in contextual 
essence and understanding with regards to what we are reading. And so when that occurs, beloved, it saps this scripture of its strength because it is taken out of context. Now I'm sharing these points because in my personal experience, and many of you may be able to relate with what Shepherd Man is preparing to say as well, Psalm chapter 91 in modern times is often read, preached to congregations, and quoted as a general promise from the Most High to every single believer when this is a singular individual expressing faith and hope and expectation in the I am. It has commonly been presented as a general guarantee that no matter what takes place in this natural world, the believer will literally be sheltered and protected from all danger. Now, beloved, we must remember that in the time of King David and other original psalmists, such as Asaph, that compiled the Psalms, because there were four writers in whole, of which King David was just one, and about a third of the psalm is attributed to him. Otherwise, it was written by other authors. We need to remember that in King David's time, spiritual salvation and soul-saving grace did not technically exist as of yet because the Hamashiach, praise the Most High, was centuries from arriving to offer his life as a sacrifice so that we might be redeemed. So the only protection that the writer of Psalm chapter 91 could have been writing about and referring to was protection from literal threats in the carnal world at that time. So when they prefaced being protected in a war setting, that's what they literally meant. They weren't talking about spiritual warfare. So thus, many in this day and time actually translate the psalmist words as a literal guarantee from the most high. As literal as they were being, that's how literal we've been taught and many of us take this, that we're going to be protected, that if you say something cross to somebody because you're a believer, that they're not going to come cross your mouth because somehow the most high is going to miraculously hold their fist from your face if they're angered by your words. I'm just using that as an example. Yeah, many in this day and time translate the psalmist's words and many preach the psalmist's words as little guarantee from the Most High that we will be shielded from natural harm, natural harm, simply because those verses were compiled in the sacred codices. Is it, if it's in the Bible, people minister that it's the words of the Most High. And so just as the psalmist was protected or had the belief and trust that they would be, we're going to be protected. Shepherd man, what's your point? When harm at times does visit the believer, subsequently many feel abandoned by the creator because of their incorrect purview and exegetical insight regarding Psalm 91. In their minds, Psalm 91 is a guarantee that was supposed to protect them and ensure their shelter from the harm they, they actually have encountered. And that's just not what Psalm 91 is. The devil is a lie. That's how many folks have been encouraged to view these verses. That is how these verses have been conveyed and utilized in countless sermons. I'm a witness. I was raised with people backing up the belief that they'll be healed from every malady that comes to them, that they'll be protected from all harm because they have recited the sinner's prayer, accepted salvation, and thus view themselves as saved. Now, don't take me wrong, beloved. Ultimately, our souls are protected. Let me say that loud for people that just are looking for reasons uh, to have, be in conjecture against Shepherd Man this morning. Ultimately, our souls are protected via the salvation afforded us by the grace of the Most High God of the Hebrews. But Nate, make no mistake about it this morning. 
Natural and physical as well as mental and spiritual harm will come to every believer in this corporeal or carnal existence in which we live. I'll say it and I'll say it again. Natural and physical harm and mental and spiritual harm and turmoil is something that we will face. It is important to remember, if not realize altogether from the start, that Psalm 91 is a literal song lyric of affirmation from an Israelite possessing great confidence and conviction in the I am's ability to protect and deliver them from any danger or carnal adversary due to their personal faith in the covenant that the Most High made with the nation of Israel. So the question arises this morning, if believers today are not supposed to literally adopt these words as a guaranteed promise of their own protection, Psalm 91 that is, what meaning should be extracted from these verses? Are you saying that the Most High, we shouldn't look for no protection? No, I'm not saying that. The Most High has operated with regards to so many of us in the sheer element of miracle. How often or how many times has he made a way out of no way? I'm not saying that you shouldn't expect the Most High to protect you with his mighty hand in no sense of the word. That's not what we're saying. Then what should we extrapolate from these verses, shepherd man? Great question. Psalm chapter 91 can be and most definitely should be viewed and recite it as an exhortation of faith. Trust, hope, and belief in the Father's promise and capability to deliver. It is a testament to how we should believe in the power of the Most High. Now, what causes us to say this and to exegete this in this manner? The key word which unlocks the sheer power. That's right. I said a word. Well, shepherd man, it was 16 verses in this chapter, but there's one word, particularly in the English translation that we read, that unlocks the sheer power of the entire chapter. And it lies in the very first verse of Psalm chapter 91. And that word sets the tone for the entire chapter. In the King's Authorized Version of the English Translation, in the KJV, it's a phrase, and that phrase is secret place. However, in the NIV, which we referenced this morning for this morning's text, it is the word shelter. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the original Hebrew term for the phrase secret place or shelter in verse 1 of Psalm chapter 91 is the Hebrew noun sather, which means covering. It actually and literally also means shrouded in a cloak of secrecy. Hallelujah. The author is literally describing a place, an actual location, which houses their faith, hope, belief, and confidence in the Most High's ability to protect, to, to, to protect rather. He that dwelleth in the secret place or dwelleth in the shelter, which is the Most High. In other words, saying that the Most High itself, the Most High himself is a literal shelter and protection. So the author is literally describing a place an actual location which houses their faith, hope, belief, and confidence in the Most High's ability to protect and or deliver them from any adversary or obstacle placed in their path. An actual vow or covenant places an obligation on all parties involved in that covenant. Now, that's powerful, so I'm going to say that again. An actual vow or covenant. In other words, when you come into a covenant and exchange vows for marriage, for example, with another person, they ain't the only person that's married. Everybody involved in the reciting of those vows and then uh, the embrace and agreement of that covenant 
are covenant keepers. So oftentimes, why do you say that, Shepherd Man? Why is that important? Because we'll enter into a covenant with the creator and act as if we don't have a part to take in that covenant. All parties involved bear responsibility for upholding that covenant. The Most High goes into covenant with us, offers us the free gift of salvation. We receive it. We still have a task and a responsibility to bear and be involved and secure that covenant. It's not just the most high. It's not just the party vowing the promise, but the memory, yes, the memory and preservation of the vow by those receiving the vow is the foundation on which every covenant becomes fully established. Yes, it's the most high's pledge and thus responsibility to make good on his promise to protect our souls by his unmerited favor, utilizing his grace. But it is the responsibility of every believer to protect, to shelter, and keep his promises to us and his actual words spoken to us and to hide it and shelter and protect that and that binds us as much to the covenant as his vow to protect us and keep us binds him. Hallelujah. And it's the words of the Most High to each and every one. It's the words of the Most High to every one of us that our adversary, High Satan, author of lies, is coming after first and foremost. You think he's coming after you literally, so you want literal protection from Psalm 91, but the enemy don't have to worry about whether you'll be protected or not because you'll put yourself in harm danger if you forget about the words and the promises given to us by the Most High. Hallelujah. The author of Psalm, because we live through the word, chapter 119, verse 11 wrote, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Come to a place or get into a circumstance where I'm tempted or where I'm surrounded round about with trouble. I have got a secret place. I've got a shelter that the enemy don't know the access code, don't know the password to. I've got a place where I've hidden your words where I can go and by default, the memory of those words come back to me and cause me to realize and recognize that I am in covenant with you and that you have made promises to me and those promises are yea and amen and that therefore I remember my covenant. Hallelujah. And do not personally sin against thee. In my closing this morning, I told y'all it was going to be short. My question to each and every one of you today is where is your secret place of shelter regarding the words of the Most High to you today? Where do you place his words of promise, scriptures for learning, and prophecies of expectation so that they are not easily tampered with or even stolen? It is my experience that folks who don't even remember who they are no longer walk in the birthright and legacy deeded to their forefathers. They don't walk every day and traverse this evil and tumultuous world with the confidence and assurance possessed by those that realize that they travel with the covering and salvation afforded unto them by the King of Kings. If you don't remember who you are and if you don't remember where you've been, then you will walk in jeopardy. Where do you keep his words and your or thus our part of the covenant today? Yes, in fact, we do expect the Most High to protect, shelter, and keep us. I understand that we do, but he expects us to remember that he said he would in the first place. Somebody out there is saying, why should that matter, shepherd man? If the Lord simply does what he's pledged to us to do, what matters whether or not we sometime lose track or forget? Beloved, no, 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 no. It matters because in my experience, a person who doesn't even remember that they are protected, doesn't even recall that they are secured, doesn't even expect to be saved, well, 
in my experience, oftentimes people of that attitude and disposition find themselves running headlong into snares they otherwise would have avoided altogether. Remember the psalmist, 119 and 11. In my heart, I've hidden your word that I might not sin against you. He can protect us from danger seen and unseen. How is he supposed to protect us from our choices to place us and ourselves literally in positions and in snares that could have been avoided if we would have remembered his word? Beloved, you may ask sincerely this morning, are we protected as believers? And the Most High is responding by asking, do you remember my words to you? And are you walking in my original covenant made to you? Hallelujah. How are you sheltering his word today? King Solomon, I believe in Proverbs 18, said that the name of the Most High, the name of the Lord, is a strong tower. They that run in that tower will be safe. We have a responsibility regarding this covenant of safety and protection. We have a responsibility to remember his word. Is his words to you left out in the open so that they can be messed with, as it were, so that they can be altered, so that they can be easily attacked? stolen from you? Do we just leave it sitting on the counter? What has access to the words and the promises that the Most High has made unto us? Is his name a strong tower? Is he in and of, in of himself a shelter to us? How are you sheltering his word today, beloved? Do you just allow his words and his promises to you to be just shared with any person? What are their intentions for you? How haphazard are we with his word? My Lord, beloved, we play a role, an intricate role in this covenant. He's not just married to the believer. We're married to him as well. Amen? Just a powerful encouragement that we wanted to share with you. Introspection. We were studying Psalm 91 and we have to be careful with regards to how we exegete and the way in which we hermeneutically understand the language of scripture because we want to walk in the power and we want to release the essence of it and we don't want to be mistaken and we definitely don't want, because Satan is always on that perch. Satan is always, uh, so to speak, on one of our shoulders, ready to speak words of derision that calls us to be misguided with regards to the Father's intentions for us. Yes, we should expect the Most High's mighty hand to work on our behalf, but we also need to understand our role. We also need to understand reality. And that is the important essence of understanding scriptures such as Psalm 91 better, amen? I pray that you were able to receive something great from that. Would you bow your heads and pray with us this morning as we close? Heavenly Father, we thank you for and always are grateful for understanding and insight with regards to your word. We're asking that you give us the strength to be able to hide it in a place that is not accessible by other man and that is not easily surrendered to the enemy. And in times past where that has been the case, we're never going to be remiss to say uh, that we are seeking forgiveness. Forgive us, Most High, for uh, being frivolous with the handling of your words. And we're asking right now that uh, you save and deliver us. And we believe that that is nigh us because of that powerful sacrifice of your son, the Hamashiach, that died on the cross so that we might obtain salvation and so that grace could be uh, warranted and so that uh, grace could be distributed rather unto each and every one of us that desire seek it and uh, that we receive it right now and we're asking that you make us sozos where the words of Paul the apostle in 
Romans 10 and 9, the English transliteration is saved, which means that you rescue and protect us until such a time that you uh, return for us, preserve us and keep us until such a time that we live with you in infinite time when you return and upon your return for us. And we're asking right now that you keep us. We're asking right now that you remember those names that were called and all those that we intercede on behalf of with regard to needs. And we're asking that you respond and uh, that you provide according to your riches and glory, but let your will be done. And we ask these blessings and many more in that great name. Yeshua, Yehoshua HaMashiach, Christ's name we pray. Amen. Listen, we're asking that you join us this Wednesday and join us subsequently uh, for another Saturday Sabbath. We love you. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. Keep someone, keep everyone in prayer. Continue to intercede on behalf of those in the body and those who need uh, your prayers and the lost sheep that are out there that the Most High brings them into the fold. But remember that we play an intricate role, that we're a light to this world so that they can find the fold and rejoin the fold. And until the next time, be beloved Shabbat Shalom, blessings to you.